suspension insulator simulation in Quickfield. These insulators are connected in chain of two. The insulators are suspended from the grounded tower arm and K high voltage power line. We know the transmission line electric potential. We know the relative permittivity of the insulator. And our task is to calculate electric field stress distribution around the insulators. If you download the simulation files, you will find the CAD model inside. This file is not needed to perform the simulation in quick field. It is used just to demonstrate how the model was created originally in the CAD system. So I will open this file. This is not a quick field. This is the CAD pro where the geometry model was originally created. The high voltage conductor we have one insulator, we have the arm, we have the suspended conductor, intermediate conductor, and somewhere we have, we have here is the second insulator. To transfer this geometry model in quick field first, I will export all these objects to the step file. File export disk insulator now I will start quick field and here I will create new problem disk insulator and the location folder will be here okay next I should choose the problem type this would be the electrostatic analysis and the model class is three-dimensional import here you can see the geometry model editor window the only action you can do here is to import the step file. So I will import the step file. Here it is. You can see there are six bodies, but the air is not included. To include the air in a geometry model, I will enable the background region. The simulation workflow on three-dimensional problem is generally the same as in two-dimensional one. You should assign labels to geometric objects. Then through these labels you will specify physical properties. Then you can run the simulation. And to assign the label you should select the object. So let's start with this box. I click the object and the face is selected. To select the body, I should click again on the selected face. Now the body beneath the face is selected. And for this body, I can assign label air. Next, I would like to assign labels to other objects, but I cannot see them. There are several options. Right-click the selected body to browse for the options available. You can hide the body or you can make the body transparent. Let's try the transparent option. Now I can see what is hidden inside. But when I try to click and select some internal object, the box will be selected instead. You see? So let's try another option. Now I click to select the face, click to select the body, right click and 
hide build box. Now I can work with internal objects. Third click to select the face, second click to select the body, and press and hold the control button on the keyboard to select multiple objects at the same time. So I select both insulators and assign the label insulator. Again, I will hide these objects to have a more clear view on the remaining parts. These all objects are conductors. We'll use the rectangle tool to select them all. Press the right mouse button, hold it and drag. Then I release the button. Here you can see that four bodies are selected and you can type in the label for them. Conductors. Now let's specify physical properties for the materials. For the air I specify the electric permittivity of 1. For the insulator, double click the label. I will specify electric permittivity of 5. And for the conductors, there is no electric field inside conductors and we can simulate this by specifying uh, the high value of electric permittivity. For example, 100,000. Okay. Now I will unhide all hidden objects. Next I would like to specify electric potential on the conductor's surface. As I said, there is no electric field inside conductors, so we need to select surface of conductors. I will hide all objects but conductors. Okay, again I use the rectangle to select multiple objects at the same time. Now let's check what we have in selection. We have two bodies and several faces selected. And for the faces I give the label grounded. Now these conductors have high voltage electric potential, so I select conductors and for the faces type in the label high voltage. And this conductor has unknown electric potential and there is special boundary condition for this kind, so I select the faces and type in the label floating. For the high voltage conductor, I specify electric potential, which is 10 kilovolts. OK. For the grounded surface, I specify zero electric potential. And for the floating conductor, I specify floating conductor, boundary condition. Again, unhide all objects. We have finished it with labels editing and can proceed with the meshing. In three dimensional analysis, the mesh is constructed in three stages. First, you build the mesh for the edge. You can see that the mesh size is different for the large object and for the small objects. Quickfield chooses the mesh size automatically according to the geometric object dimensions. You can change this rule and specify manual spacing values. For example, here and here, I will specify the spacing value of 0.1.
here the spacing value of 0 0.05 and here the spacing value of 0 0.02 you can visualize the spacing values to see at which objects the spacing value was manually specified and to guess about the spacing size now let's build the mesh on the faces and build the mesh in the volumes Okay, we can proceed with this simulation. Press Solve button, save all simulation files, and here you can see the result. This is the electric potential distribution over the air box faces. Actually, the value of interest here is the electric field stress distribution so I will switch the presentation type and I will use the cut plane to look inside you can change the direction of the cut plane And you can see this picture in a separate window. Close the geometry model window and arrange into horizontally. Now here I will again adjust the field picture and switch on the electric field strength and switch off the easy line plot. Now if I move the cross-section plane in three-dimensional window, I will see the change in the two-dimensional section window. Actually you can specify the cross-section position and orientation manually for example. In two-dimensional window you can build contours left click to start the contour again left click to add the intermediate point and right click to finish the contour here is the contour and I can take a look at the XY plot switch the values here I can see the same values in the table I can copy all the data from the table to the Excel file I can copy plots to the Word document I can copy color pictures using the print screen on the keyboard and paste them again to the Word document and I can crop the picture here in the two-dimensional section window you can use the probing tool to find the field parameters in some specific points electric potential, electric field stress, vector components, the electric displacement. You can calculate integral values. This integral value is calculated for the entire cross-section. You can find the electric charge, the average surface potential and other parameters here. In three-dimensional window you can adjust the presentation for example I will switch off the color surface plot and switch on the vector plot you can see that electric field stress vectors are directed from the high voltage conductor towards the grounded conductor 
You can also switch on the slice plot and see the multiple cost sections at the same time. You can switch either surface plot and see the surfaces of echo potential. You can also hide bodies here. For example, I will hide the air. And you can use the probing tool to find the local values at some specific points. And you can use the integral tool. To calculate the integral, you should first select the object. You can select faces. Or you can select bodies. You can also select the lines to make an XY plot. Here I will select several lines and switch on the XY plot. Electric potential distribution. So this is the way you can analyze the electric field distribution around and inside the suspension insulator.